Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to this Legacy Conference stage, Mr. Denzel Rodriguez. <laughs> Do it now. Uh huh. Hey. That's my Puerto Rican roots coming out. Yes. All right. Let's see what else. Do I more comfortable walking? Yes, I'm gonna take after Jessica. Yeah. Like yeah. Command on the stage, right? Yes. Love it. Love it. So I really enjoyed what, just the flow that we have so far, because the last speaker was focusing a lot on making the money, making the bread, producing the wealth. And now you're gonna listen to someone that says, okay, once you get the bread, now you gotta keep it. Okay? So you wanna learn how to make money, boom. Jessica, you come to me about keeping it. Stewarding, very important. So I'm gonna share with you some strategies, some concepts, some principles that are kingdom-based, kingdom-rooted. I'm a man of God. I represent the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Amen. I'm an ecclesiastical financial counselor. Well, yeah. I'm an ambassador for Christ. Yes. Come on, come on. And we have got to get comfortable talking about the money. A lot of you were scared simple question she was asking about decisions with money that you don't even have yet. And you was already scared about it. So imagine once you get it, you have to understand, there's a lot of information already coming at you. We need to really rely on source. Where do we get our source of information from? So I'm going to have a, a bit of a plea, and then I'm going to give you some logical stuff, right? Clear. This is world systems, this is how the world works, this is how, how it operates. Then I'm also gonna give you my plea in terms of, hey, if you seek the source, if you seek the kingdom first, I promise you, you will not be let down and you will prevent certain enemies from coming into your mind. Because in order for us to break these chains, y'all don't have physical chains on you, okay? Probably, I think, what is it? Uh, if we look at all of history, probably almost every culture has experienced some sort of physical slavery bondage to some extent, right? Some cultures maybe more than others, right? So we've got physical chains that we broke out of, that your ancestors broke out of, so that you don't have to experience those physical chains. We now live in one of the most powerful, greatest countries in the world, the United States. We're completely best, blessed. There's still tons of people around the world that are still in physical chains, physical bondage. What's interesting to me, and I've had the privilege to speak to some people who have been physically prevented, say sexually abused, physically abused, right? I've had the privilege to talk to these people and then listen to their stories. And then I talk to people who are not experienced any of those things, but almost have the similar chains that these experience, these people actually went through, right? So that may be some of the people in this room, right? I know for me, I've, I've had what it feels like almost physical chains on you. And then to finally get access to knowledge, to finally get access to the information that you and I and we all need to move forward, I have found what has worked for me is to always seek the source in everything that I do. Right? Everything. If I just start with source, I'm going to get the, the mindsets, the discipline, the discernment, the action steps, and then I enter or engage with a resource example, say Miss Jessica here, is a resource to information that she shared, which she got from a source, right? She was already claiming the father up here on stage, so I already know. Right? And it's just a matter of Source, relying on him, then he gives us access to resources, and then we have to manage and steward those resources. At the end of the day, it's not yours, it's his. Is it better when I talk like this? 
All right, you can hear this? Okay. Yeah, that's a good clap moment. I like that. Let's dive right into it. Action steps. Okay. This is my information. I have a, a table in the back. Shout out to my mom in the back over there. All right. She's responsible for this. All right. Stand over here. Shout out to my fiance now. Oh, check out that room when you get a chance. Check out the room when you get a chance. Shout out to her because she designed, made this uh, presentation that I'm going to share with you. Shout out to my confidant, brother in Christ, brother from another mother, Joshua Cox over here, the photographer, taking some photos for me. Appreciate him. And I have a client in the house, uh, Mr. Minor Ramos. I want to shout out you uh, for believing in me, okay, all these years. And another brother, Alex Albaran, is in the house. My, my friend, this, this guy has helped me generate a lot of money. I've been able to generate seven figures over the last five years now. Uh, so yeah, that's good. Breaking chains, breaking chains. So those are all the shout outs that I want to give. And also thank you to Glenn for believing in me. Um, don't know if you know this story. This is, you know, behind the scenes. I had originally just signed up to be a sponsor. I was just gonna be a guy at a booth, right, type of thing. And uh, I was gonna, I think I was gonna have like a small, like maybe 15, 20 minute talk or something like that. Well, the Legacy Conference was supposed to happen last year, right, it got postponed. And the keynote financial speaker, I know who this couple is, his, and her, his or her money, right? Big YouTube channel probably 4x the size of my YouTube channel, right? I think I'm at around 50,000 subs. They're at like maybe a quarter mil, right? I think now. I've had conversations, they're amazing. They were supposed to be keynote speaker here. Something happened in their lives, they, had a, they dealt with a, a loss, I believe, in, in, in the family, so uh, uh, God you know, will help them get through that, and I'm pretty sure they're you know, still working through it. They also planted a church, I think it was last year, during COVID. And then I get a call from uh, Glenn. He was like, hey, um, we don't have our, our keynote financial speaker. Uh, I'd like to put you in the, in the, in the list. And we'll go to a board, and if they say yes, you're good. 27 years old, no credibility. I have no you know, major licenses. I didn't go to college. I'm a average type of a student, A, Bs, and Cs. I, you know, uh, you know, I'm talking about money, yet I was a thief for a couple of years. I used to steal money, right, without anybody knowing, right? Look, it was just confessing. Look, these are my sins, right? I'm, I'm open. I'm at that point. I've come to a conclusion. We all got dirt, right? And the faster you get rid of that, oh, the chains will break. The faster you rely on him, the father, oh, my goodness, my goodness. Not even qualified to be here on stage. You know, long story short, they were like, hey, the board decided we want you. Awesome. Like, All right, here we go. <laughs> here we go. All right. So this is my information real quick. Instagram, YouTube, you can primarily, primarily find me on YouTube. That's where you can see all of my work. Do your due diligence. Do not just trust what I am saying just because I sound good. Okay? I'm putting myself on the spot. I'm putting myself in the hot seat. Don't distrust everything that I say. We're living in a world where there are enemies in front of you, behind you, above you, below you, all around. There's enemies. Maybe even in this room. And they don't even know yet. Okay? You've got to have that discernment. We're living in times. We're living in weird times right now. So do your due diligence. That is one key thing right there on how to keep the bag, how to keep the money, keep the wealth how to rotate it in your economy, is you need to be constantly, you know, observing who your enemies are, right? We don't do enough sermons on these in the church. We talk about, you know, God, God, yeah, you know, put on the armor of God. For what? You have an enemy, okay? A big one, right? His name is Satan, the devil, and he's got a whole bunch of people working for him, operating. That's spiritually speaking. Then you just got normal everyday type enemies that may, may or may not you know, be in your favor. So it's important to have that discernment, do your due diligence, do your homework. Check me out first before you trust anything that I say. I'm gonna share some information, I'm gonna share facts, resources, help you move forward. Um, and then my time's over there, right? Okay, cool. So that's my uh, information. Another action step, 
that you can take on my website, denzelrodriguez.com. I have what's called a ministry of finance. Has anybody heard of a ministry of finance before? Anybody heard of that before? Raise your hand if you've heard of that before. A ministry of finance. There's ministry for the homeless. There's ministries for single moms, divorced moms, widows. There's ministries for, you know, helping and relief and, and things like that. But there's almost nothing in regards to finances, especially in the body of Christ, right? There's a scripture that can back me up on this. I believe it's somewhere in Luke regarding uh, uh, informing us, right? Because the Bible is written for us, not necessarily to us, right? In certain regards, right? So when it talks about how go and make friends with people of the world, right? People who are in the world because they have become wise. Whereas the children, the, the, the body of Christ, have become unwise, foolish, and stiff-necked people, right? St is yeah. that the word, stiff-necked people? That, that's uh, around Moses' time that language was used. Guys, we, we need to learn how to operate in the world, but not become of it. Yeah, you're teaching it here now. Okay. Yeah, it's good. Interesting, all right. So I started what's called the Ministry of Finance, called Finance Geek Ministry. Everything that I do that people pay me top dollar for, they pay me for coaching, they pay for my programs and courses and all the things that I have going on that generate revenue, I actually do it for free, right? As well, because it's a ministry. Yeah. Okay, so I'm saying, hey, if you are broke, busted, disgusted, uh, negative cash flow, bad credit, that's not an excuse. Come on. No excuse, sorry. Right? Denzel's got a finance ministry here that you can enroll. You sign up right there. You click that button when you're on my website. And you can get access to free coaching, free support, a community of people that can hold you accountable. You have to be willing to work, though. Work means to become who you are. Okay? That might be a gem. Maybe you've never heard that before for the young folks in here. Literally, work means to become who you are. In a biblical sense. So there's a lot of us in here who have been working for someone. Uh-oh. There's been a lot of people in this room that are working for things, some things, instead of working to become who you are. So the moment somebody presents an opportunity to you and you're like, I don't have time for that because I'm working. And you don't realize, wait a minute, I'm showing you something how you can become more of who you are. If you become more of who you are then you're gonna unlock these skills, gifts, and talents in your life that you've been given authority over and access to, to obtain and make, produce the wealth, yeah. and then keep it and steward it. Because it's not yours at the end of the day, yeah. right? It's not yours, it's his. So the, the better you manage and steward those resources, the, the bigger the flows of income will come your way. So that's the second action step to take on my YouTube channel. I have what's called a, uh, a different playlist. All right, everybody's pretty much familiar with, with YouTube, how it works. You go to my channel, Denzel Rodriguez, not Washington. I'll pop right up, not the other guy, okay? And I have these different playlists that you can check out. I got something called All About the Line of Credit, and I got another playlist here called Velocity Banking Pre-Game Work. I'm gonna talk about this concept called Velocity Banking. It is a phenomenal, foreign, unique, controversial way for you to manage, steward, and multiply your wealth, right? And engage in other investment opportunities like crypto trading, forex trading, options, real estate, starting your own business, you name it, right? This is a very unique strategy that you can use to operate the finances as they come into your economy and then multiply it out. I like to deal in multiplication. I, I don't really like to necessarily grow my money. I like to multiply it. Because Genesis 126, if the recipe for dominion involves multiplication in it, I must work, I must plant my seed, harvest, I must grow, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, recipe for dominion. Okay, cool. Here is a stat. I'm going to set the scene, set the stage. Here's what's going on. We've, we've got a problem. Okay. This is the median household income in the United States, and I believe this was a 2020, 2020 or 2021 stat. 
so it's only a couple years old, it's not that old. And this talks about the different ethnic groups that are the most successful in producing wealth, producing income on average, specifically in the United States, not in other countries, just looking at the US because that's where we are at, we're in the US. So I found this to be interesting because I'm obsessed with the kingdom. I'm obsessed with learning everything I possibly can about the kingdom of heaven here on earth. And there are clues. Success leaves clues. I am part of a culture here at the second to last, Hispanic Latino. We average about 43,000 a year in income. And then for majority of us in the room, I'm guessing for the most part, African American in here, right? Or some descent within that, right? Any Spanish, other Spanish folks in here in the house? Any Spanish backgrounds? Only a couple right here, right? And boom, boom, okay, cool. Any white folks? Couple white folks? Yay! All right, look where y'all at. We're told by the media that this is the problem, these people, right? Uh -huh. Oh man, don't let me go there, I might get canceled. <laughs> but look, look how they're performing. Interesting. They're the problem. That's what we're told in cultures, right? Oh, they're the problem, they're the problem, they're the problem. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll put it in the words of Denzel Washington. Yeah. It's the culture, <laughs> right? Martin Scorsese could do a certain movie that another director couldn't. It's culture, right? He talked about there's something, you know, uh, there's certain music that I listen to. It just, it comes out, right? And when you guys have your music and other cultures have their music, certain things that we do come out of us. So there's good things in all of these different cultures, regardless of what the income is producing, right? But then there are some things that say some of these cultures here are not doing correct that maybe we could learn from other cultures. So if you're willing, okay, this is a tough part, if you're willing to surrender what you think you know about a thing, if you're willing to adopt a kingdom-like culture without having to sacrifice what you grew up on, I'm not, I'm not asking you to change the food you eat. I'm not gonna eat Pakistani food, no. No, I don't even know what that is. I'm all right, I'm all right. I'm all right with my, my black people food and my Hispanic food, right? I'm good, I'm good. But what I am saying is there are some things that we do as a, a culture that is holding us back financially from acquiring the wealth. And even when we do acquire the wealth, uh-oh, even when we do acquire the wealth, what are the, what are the things that we do? What are, what are the things that we do? The moment we get our first six figures or even a tax refund, boom, down payment on a Mercedes. Uh-oh. We want to buy things because it helps us with our trauma and the things that we face when we didn't have and mama said this and daddy said that or maybe mommy wasn't there or daddy wasn't there, right? And so we do things that literally prevent us, no one else, all right, now we can argue that there's other things that literally prevent certain cultures from thriving, no doubt at all. We can point to the laws, we can point to the ethics and policies within our government that literally prevent certain groups from succeeding. We can, you know, we don't have to argue that. What I wanna target is those specific cultural things that Indian Americans, Filipinos, Japanese, Malaysian, Chinese, these Asian groups, what are they doing? How are they keeping the money? You know, a, a gem that I got for me was, okay, I, I just need to hang out with those people, All right? If in the workplace, if I can find me a Filipino in the hospital, next time I go get my physical, talk to the nurse, Filipino problem, ask them. Indian, the next time I'm, asked, I'm calling about my computer problems, right, and I get them on the phone or I'm like, hey, you know, uh, is it possible we can have a conversation and talk, uh, you know, next time I'm at a networking event? I'm looking, right? I'm looking, not just, I may be canceled for this, but I mean, I do look at people's, the way they look, and you can kind of tell what they look like and maybe what they said. So I go up to them, hey, are you a uh, Filipino? Are you Indian? Are you this, that, that? And I want to sit with them and just ask them, hey, what did mom tell you for years and years and years? What did dad tell you for years and years and years? I know what, what I grew up, I was told we don't have enough money. 
We don't have enough money. We can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. No, you can't do that. Hey, 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 you know, because we're, you know, Latino, you can't do this. No, 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 don't say that. Stay low, stay below the radar, right? A lot of our cultures, even we come from other countries here, whether illegal or legally, right? And that there creates some trauma there. There's trauma in all the different, you know, obstacles and challenges that we face. So I'm like, huh. And then that stems into ways of being, like the way you be, the way you're being. Literally, maybe there's some cultures that we can release, that we can say, no, I don't want this to be a part of my culture. And I want to adopt kingdom cultures and maybe I will learn some clues as to how I can go about that. So you can find that online if you just type in median household income in the United States. And that's a great way that I learn. And understand, not that I can't learn from another Hispanic person, or another black person, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, hey, consider the next time you network, find another group, another culture that I can learn from, that I can just sit down with. Hey, how do you operate your marriage? Hey, how do you operate your household? Where do you guys shop? Where do you guys spend money? At what point, when you start making six figures, when do you buy the Mercedes? Right? We don't have enough conversations on when to acquire the things that do make us say, you know, happy, yeah. right? Like, should I buy this Rolex because I'm a seven figure earner? Does that make sense? Should I buy a six figure Mercedes and have a $1,500 payment just because some YouTube channel said that I can write it off my expenses? Does that actually make sense according to your finances? What? What position does that put you in? You now have to cover the premium gas. You now have to cover the cost right. of that vehicle. Right. They didn't talk about that. Right. They just talk about the, you know, oh, you know, ride it off, da da da, you know, get your get your G Wagon. As soon as you make that, as soon as you make the band, get the G Wagon. Now you gotta do this, you gotta talk with the celebrities, you gotta, you know, pay first class and do all these different things. Wait a minute. What does the Indian do? What does the Filipino do? How do, how do you guys rotate money? You know the average Average Asian uh, Asian descent group, they flip and rotate one dollar roughly 20 plus times before it leaves their cultural group, their economy. Hispanics and Latinos, you're, you're lucky if we do it once. We don't even want to do business with each other. Oh, that hurts. I offended some people. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend people. So, first takeaway. You need to know your numbers. If you're gonna work with a Jessica, you're gonna work with any one of the coaches here, you're gonna put money into someone else, you're gonna invest with someone, get in a position where you can say, okay, here is where I'm at. Here is how I operate. We need to admit where we're currently at. What is going on, right? I always, if you ever watch my YouTube channel, majority are gonna say, here are the four major numbers. Here are the numbers. Here are the numbers. Start with the numbers, right? What are your four major numbers? Income, expense, debt, and cash flow. Those are, your, those are important numbers. You're taking notes, write that down. That's how you wanna write down your finances. How much is coming in per month? I like to underestimate if you're a salary plus commission, if you're hourly plus overtime or bonus pay, whatever it is, I like to just uh, put the base in. Okay, this is what's guaranteed and then I could also generate about this much in a month. With expenses, I like to overestimate. Right? We need to put every single dollar where every single dollar is going. I'm old school, even though I'm 27. I write things down, okay? But other people might wanna use apps, and that's fine too. As long as you're gonna commit to logging in on a consistent basis to check your numbers. And then there's debt. How much debt do you have? The average debt in America in a household is over 150,000 bucks, and that number is probably rising, and then when you break it between the different groups, ooh, ooh, it's even higher. Right? It's, it's weird how someone making 50 grand a year can have like $400,000 of debt. Okay? It's, it's like, what are you doing? Okay? Cash flow. What's left over? After all expenses and debts are paid, what is left over? Cash flow. Okay? We need to know those numbers first before I implement a strategy, a concept such as velocity banking as we're going to dive into it in just a second. Okay? So here's the definition of velocity banking. I crafted this myself, just observing the marketplace, okay? What it is. Has anyone ever heard of velocity banking before? Raise your hand. If you're familiar, practicing, only a few hands, okay? 
And raise your hand if you have no idea what velocity banking is, first time you're hearing that word. Awesome, that makes sense. Because velocity banking, understand this is just a marketing term. Don't get caught up on the word, it's just marketing. Just referring to the speed or direction that something is going in. I'm looking to increase your velocity of money. The flow, the flow, right? That's the goal. Banking is referring to how you operate your finances. Every one of us uses a bank. So I'm looking to improve how you bank in the marketplace today. This strategy comes from another country. Australia is, when, is where it started. So you put that in your notes. Australia is where Velocity Banking came from. In Australia, they don't do 30-year mortgages. They pay their mortgages off in like 10 years or less because they are using this concept to do that, <laughs> along with many of their other debts. They have certain types of banking systems in their country that help them do this, which we have in the United States. But the banks are not teaching you this, okay? It is not exactly profitable for most banks to sit down and teach you this concept. It is complex. There's some, you know, there's a, a lot of steps involved in this, but when executed properly, the results are phenomenal, right? In terms of either using the concept to pay off debt or using the concept to actually generate more income. So you can do both. You can do both at the same time or you can do one at a time. Very unique. So it's the ability to leverage other people's money, OPM. If we're gonna get access to the wealth and we're already starting at so low, we're already in last place. Can't go no lower. We're in last place, second to last place. To me, that's an opportunity. Yeah, it is an opportunity. To me, that's an opportunity. Can you imagine in the next 10, 15 years, we jump five ranks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, you can't go nowhere but up. Yeah. When you in last, you can't go nowhere but up. When you failed so many times, you can't go nowhere but forward. You done failed all the times you were supposed to fail. My goodness. So the ability to leverage other people's money via a line of credit. These are terms I want you to write down if you've never heard them before. These are terms in the banking system that is gonna help you leverage your position to jump certain levels, all while being good stewards and managers of his resources, okay? So it's the ability to, ability to leverage a line of credit, a credit card, okay? Personal line of credit, or business line of credit, a HELOC, home equity line of credit. Write that down if you don't know what that is. So we have PLOC, stands for personal line of credit, right? CC, credit card, BLOC, stands for business line of credit. For those of you who have businesses, you can obtain this on your business. And then if those of you who are homeowners, raise your hand, homeowners, homeowners, you got mortgages, cool. Depending on the amount of equity that's in your property, you can obtain one of these tools, a home equity line of credit. These tools can be used to rapidly pay off debt, right? By canceling interest on your debts faster than traditional ways of paying off debt by using your own income and cash flow, right? Pretty interesting. So did Denzel just tell me that I could use debt to pay debt? Didn't my pastor tell me that's dumb? Uh-oh. I've, I've heard this in the church. Uh-oh. We, 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 got, we got a gentleman that's influenced us for many, 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 many years. His name is Dave Ramsey. Okay, shout out to Dave Ramsey. Love Dave Ramsey, right? There was a time where I didn't agree with a lot of the things that he said, and then all of a sudden I started to say, okay, there's a place for what he's saying. But then there's this guy that came along called... Grant Cardone, anybody know Grant Cardone, local resident in South Florida? Pretty big name. This guy came out and he started saying, hey, not using debt is irresponsible in the 21st century today. So now I'm conflicted. Wait a minute, my pastor, Dave Ramsey, everybody's saying don't use debt, don't use debt, don't use debt, yet your pastor has a four or five million dollar loan on his church. This guy, Grant Cardone, this guy and many others in the marketplace are saying, hey, debt, debt is money. Anybody know that? Did you know that? Debt is money. 
slowly. Wait a minute. So if debt is money, and if I could just simply learn how to use the tool That's it, sir. in such a way that could benefit my culture, my group, my family, my household, could put me in a better position, then just maybe I can jump and leverage and do things effectively when I need to. I don't need to use it all the time. I'm not saying use it all the time, right? So you have Dave Ramsey he says, never use debt, never use debt, it's bad. This guy, Grant Cardone, he says, use debt all the time, leverage as much as you can, right? So it's like, okay, those are extremes on both sides. So you got Uncle G, Grandpa Dave, and then you have Cousin D. Use okay. Cousin D says, hey, I can get a little bit of this in the world, and I can get a little bit of this and put it all together. Yeah. Because we're living in a time where we can now combine multiple strategies into one. Yeah. Taking the best of what Jessica says, taking the best of what Denzel says, taking the best of what you might hear other speakers say, and you craft your own personal financial blueprint strategy. Okay? So way to do it. I like it. Let's keep going. How am I doing on time? 20, is that 20? 14. 14? Cool. I'll be quick. So simplified definition is borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. Where Peter charges me zero interest to pay Paul off. <laughs> who was charging me interest. So it's a game of interest. When it comes to paying off your debt, it's a game of interest. The faster you eliminate the interest cost, the more of your dollars go to principal, cash, right? To actually pay the debt down. So that's what we're doing. That's all we're doing. This is what banks do. This is what wealthy people do. They borrow at zero cost. Imagine being able to borrow millions of dollars at no cost with no oversight and no accountability. That ain't cute, but that's what your banks are doing. That's what our governments are doing in America. We pay taxes to a government, and they spend your money like this, right? They go all around. They spend it all, hey, here you go, oh yeah, 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 let's help these people. Okay, let's help these people. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. No accountability, no oversight. Unfortunately, you and I, we can't do that. There has to be accountability, there has to be oversight, there has to be discipline, that's what strategies are for to kind of keep things in line, okay? So let's talk about authority real quick, levels of authority. This is, this just excites me very much, okay? This is the source, and then we're gonna get right into the strategy itself. So the source, the author, okay? Who is the author, all right? Oh, good, boom, done, all right? The root word, author, meaning source, originator of a thing. So in this session today, over, over the course of this whole entire session, we are putting strategies together for yourself. So in this regard, when it comes to your financial blueprint, you have your author, right, your father in heaven, but then you are also crafting your own strategy. Yes. You, in it of itself, because you are a creation, yes. you have a creator, you get to create things, okay? Right. So in a way, you're the author, right? Yeah. If you're the author of something, you automatically have authority. That's good. The ability to give orders, yeah. right? You have credibility instantaneously when you seek access which means you are now authorized. If, you, if you're the author of the thing, you automatically have authority, which means therefore you have authorization, right? It's a security mechanism, you have a strategy to determine access levels, client privileges, this is for business owners in the room, related to system sources including files, services, computer programs, data and application features, okay? That can be turned into many different ways. But you have authority, you have authorization to have other people I'm pretty sure Jessica has a team that she has authorized to move forward in her name, in her reputation, because her reputation, she does things for her reputation, just like the father does things for his what? Name's sake. His reputation. Come on. Which means you are, since you are an author, you're, you get to recreate from creator source. This makes you authentic of undisputed origin. Yeah. Genuine. You're genuine. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, in a Velocity Banking case study, I'm giving you authority. I'm presenting a strategy. I'm saying I'm passing that authority to you because I'm passing the knowledge to you. You then are going to take action. You're then going to authorize. You're going to have authorization to now move forward 
because you've studied the principles and rules that I'm sharing with you, and I'm sharing all the different things, that all the different elements that we need to have, income, expense, debt, cash flow, the debt tool, which I mentioned earlier, your credit cards, line of credit, HELOC, that kind of thing, and the amount of money you have on hand, cash on hand. There's a lot of different ways that we can use different capital that you have on hand. Maybe you have a 401k, maybe you do have a crypto account, maybe we can use a margin account. There's a lot of different things that we can use to leverage our position to get us in a, in a higher place quicker, all while being good stewards. Yep. That's the key. Yep. That is the, I gotta stress on that because there's a lot of people that want to leverage with no accountability and oversight, and then things go well for a period of time, and then they match their lifestyle to that leverage position, and then things don't go well, and now you're back right where you started. Worse off than, you know, so not cute. Here are my velocity banking rules, okay? You can take photos, write it down, or you can meet me in the back and I can send this spreadsheet, uh, send this presentation to you if you like as well. Rule number one is knowing your cash flow. I take that number, I times it by 12. Rule number two is we use Dave Ramsey's method of snowball as our measuring stick to determine whether this strategy actually makes sense or not, okay? Velocity banking has the ability to take someone's debt where let's say the original timeline, if we mapped it out the traditional way of paying off debt, which is simply making extra payments, right? Towards your maybe one debt at a time, the lowest debt, and then working your way up. Let's say that takes the average person 10 to 13 years to get out of debt. Velocity banking can do it in five to seven or less. That is a, that's a big gap, right? Mathematically, we can do that. So that's what we use our measuring, measuring stick, credit card, uh, rule number three. Credit cards can be used to pay bills to receive cash back rewards to offset your borrowing costs. I run a business. I spend roughly over a hundred plus thousand a year on expense costs. So that hundred plus thousand dollars that I'm running that I have to spend no matter what because I'm a good steward, I run it on a credit card. I get cash back rewards and points that total over six thousand dollars per year. Maybe more. Right? So it was money I was gonna spend anyway. So let's say I spent a hundred grand, I'm gonna spend a hundred grand, I get six back. My net cost for the year is now $94,000. I just saved six grand for leveraging the banking products. Where obviously Uncle, uh, Grandpa Dave Ramsey would say that's stupid. I understand why he says it because someone who is not a good steward spends that same hundred grand and doesn't pay it back and now you're paying 25% interest, not cute. Okay. Rule number four is I only leverage up to roughly about 66% of my debt tool, my line of credit. I don't leverage the whole thing. I get 10 grand, I'm not spending the 10, okay? The only reason why I would abuse this rule is if my cash flow times 12 in a year is greater than this number, right? Because if we're gonna leverage debt to pay off debt, you need to use more capital than what you actually have in cash flow per month, right? Now here's a good example here. If I had $10,000 of cash on hand and I wanna use it to pay off debt, right? Versus the person that has 10,000 of cash flow in a year and divide that number by 10, whatever the number is, let me, uh, what's that number? 10,000 divided by 12. Six, seven, eight, let's see, 10,000 divided by 12, 833. So the person that pays $833 per month towards their debt versus the person that takes 10K in one shot and pays the debt off, they're actually gonna go faster. They're paying less interest up front. Whereas the person that goes month by month by month by month by month, you're, you're continuously paying that interest, so you're getting hurt. Yeah. Your, your cash is, is dying slowly instead of being used effectively. So those are my rules. Rule number five was, was know your numbers and solve for cash flow. Oftentimes we're told to pay off our debt by going to the smallest balance and then working your way up. In velocity banking, we look at cash flow. Cash flow first, interest savings second, the balance of the debt third. The more cash flow you have, the faster you're gonna go. So if you have a debt that you owe $2,000 on a credit card at 0%, and then you have a car note that 
you have a $5,000 balance on, and it's $500 a month, and the interest rate is 6.99%, you're told to pay off the two first, and then go to the car. But that's not costing you any interest. Right. So you pay the monthly minimum, monthly minimum, monthly minimum, and then you drive your cash flow to the car and get that 500 a month, and by the time that's paid off, by the time this card expires, you have the cash flow to eliminate that yeah. to avoid the interest. Yeah. Pretty cool stuff. So in Velocity Banking, we're trying to determine, okay, what is that lump sum amount of money that I'm gonna pull from my line of credit, HELOC, credit card, personal line of credit, to say consolidate, it's kind of like what we're doing. We're kind of consolidating these high interest debts putting them in a zero to very low interest rate environment on these debt tools, right? And this is what these, uh, the Australian people do over there with their mortgages and stuff. So I take the two, cash flow times 12, 66% of the line of credit, you're gonna get a chunk range. So it might be between 12,000 and 25,000, right? Depending on what your income is. And that's gonna help us determine, okay, here is our chunk amount, we got our numbers, now, here's what I'm gonna do to attack debt, right? Here's how I'm gonna eliminate debts. Or the, the reverse. You say, okay, this is how much cash flow I'm producing in a year, this is how much leverage I have available that I you know, don't wanna breach, and I'm going to invest in starting a crypto trading business, let's just say. And then that projects to do double, triple, quadruple, like you're, you're trying to project a rate of return, or maybe you start your own business, your own coaching, consulting practice, become an influencer, whatever it is, right? You're getting involved in those different things. So you're either using the concept to pay off debt or increase your income, increase cash flow, okay? Here's how you calculate the cost. This is where we're getting into the nitty gritty now. This is nitty gritty, nitty gritty stuff. This right here is how you can potentially jump where you are currently at today. Because you are being literally pushed down financially by the interest that you guys are paying on your debts. And even the interest that you don't even know that you're paying, which is called inflation. And there's ways to offset that as well. So check this out. In order to calculate the cost of borrowing, you have simple interest debt, you have amortized debt. Most of us here in this room have amortized debt. The interest is charged up front up front in advance, yep. that is how you're getting eaten alive by your cash flow, making those monthly payments. Yeah. In the Velocity Banking world, in our lines of credits, we're charged simple interest. It actually takes time for the money to charge you interest. It takes time for interest to accrue. So if I avoid that from ever happening, I cancel the interest. And then I take that same capital and I pay off this debt over here that was charging me interest and I reroute that cash flow and payments back to my line of credit that is not charging me interest or very little. Ooh, so here's how you do. You take the balance of our line of credit, whatever it is, you times it by the interest rate. You then divide that number by 365. That is what's called your uh, APR, your annual percentage rate is this number right here, your annual percentage rate, and then it'll say like your average daily rate is gonna be that number right here, and it'll probably be a couple dollars a day. So instead of paying hundreds of dollars in a month, you could be paying a couple of dollars, a couple of cents in a day to offset your borrowing costs. So now we're using debt to pay off debt to recover cash flow, to put me in a healthier financial position, to then be able to have my ears wide open to what a Jessica is saying and other people are saying about yeah. making money. Yeah. And then I can say, okay, I'm ready for that. I can, I can invest in here because I have been a good steward over the resources that I do have, that I have been operating in, okay? The next thing, once, once we've uh, made our chunk, whatever it is, there's three numbers that you're gonna wanna get to determine your monthly cost. The first thing was getting your daily cost, right? So what's actually happening is when I take money out of my line of credit to let's say pay off a debt, or I'm gonna pay off my mortgage. Well then in your mind you're probably thinking, well Denzel, all I did was take money from that debt and I put it into this line so I still owe the same amount of money, right Denzel? Yes, you still owe the same amount of money. 
All we did was eliminate a big portion of the interest. So now you're wondering, well, how do I pay off the line? I still have to, I still have to make a monthly payment on my car and monthly payment on this and on that. And now I have a new monthly payment on the line of credit. She's like, Denzel, what are, you, what are you getting me into? This sounds like a, you know, whoa, this is weird, right? So what's happening is, just like you have a checking account, every one of us have a checking account in here. And all that account does is receive money and then money goes out. That's all it does, right? Well, our line of credit, or AKA our debt tool, can do the same thing with a HELOC, with a line of credit, and in some cases, a credit card. You can actually dump your whole entire paycheck into the line of credit. 100% of that paycheck is now principal that just paid down the line. That same money can be used again to pay your bills. So we took a chunk of money out of here and let's say we paid off three debts. So you are no longer making payments to those three debts. You are no longer paying interest on those three debts. Those debts are now in here. And because we're dumping our whole entire income into the line, you literally cancel whatever the daily rate is from accruing. Right? You're still gonna get charged interest, but way less than what you was paying over here. right? And that's how we do the math. So what happens is now you owe money on the line. Agreed? You took money out of the line, now you owe money on the line. So how do you pay it off? By dumping all your income in, right? And then you take your expenses out, which are now what? Less. Less money's coming out because you just eliminated those payments, right? Agreed? You got the cash flow. So now you're just dealing with whatever the interest cost is on that line. So in order to do that, you take the, you take the highest balance owed on the line, you take the lowest balance, right? So you're gonna have, let's say we owe $20,000 on a line, you took 20 grand, you paid off three debts, you got cash flow, you now owe 20 on the line. So you're gonna times 20K by the interest rate of the debt tool, whatever it is, divide by 365, you get a rate. Cool, write that number down. Then you say, okay, I make $6,000 a month. So 6K is going in, in a month, that number, so 20K minus six is 14. Take that number, times it by interest rate, divide by 365, you get your daily rate. And then there's the ending balance. At the end of the month, when all bills came out, all expenses came out, guess what? You're left with that ending balance. Maybe it goes up to uh, 18,000 if you're cash flowing 2,000 a month, or maybe you're cash flowing 1,500 bucks a month, so it's 18,500, whatever it is. But now you've only paid a couple of dollars in interest as opposed to the hundreds of dollars.